Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to very quickly go over how to remote desktop into your cloud service. It's also known as RDP or remote desktop protocol. So to begin you want to navigate to your Azure portal and you want to go to cloud services classic. Click on that. Select the cloud service you want to remote desktop into and if you give it a few seconds to load up you'll see additional settings come up such as remote desktop. So let's click on remote desktop. So if you see we have remote desktop disabled. Um, if you go over here and you click on the web role instance, you'll see that connecting to this role instance is unavailable because remote desktop isn't enabled for this role. So for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go ahead and delete the deployments that are up here inside production you see this option do not select this option cloud service and its deployments because you will delete sample cloud service 2018 as well as the deployments we just want to delete the deployment so we'll just hit delete and you get a nice little pop-up telling you that the deleting is in progress so let's close these up and we'll give it a few to let the deletion happen so while the current deployment is being deleted we'll head back to visual studio and we'll take a look at some of the settings. So if you've been following along with the video series, there was an earlier video that covered deployments. And we showed two ways to do it. One which was through the Azure portal and uploading your service configuration and service package file. And the second which was directly through Visual Studio and publishing. First we'll cover what needs to be done when publishing through Visual Studio. So you want to start the same way as we did earlier. You want to right click on the cloud service, you want to click on publish. You want to verify that you have the proper credentials set up as well as your subscription. You want to go to settings, make sure everything's proper here, properly set up here. Let's change the cloud service to sample cloud service 2018. We'll go to advanced deployment label. Let's just change this up so it's not the same as before. We'll change it to uh, RDP deployment. And we have this check for a pen current date and time. We will change the storage account to sample storage and we'll go back to common settings and this right here is what we want to click. We want to click on enable remote desktop settings. So once we're here you can click on more options. You can choose different certs or certifications if you'd like but for now we're just going to use the default of automatic and for the username, we're going to create our RDP credentials. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use Joe as a username. And the password will be capital R, lowercase d, P, 2018, 2018. And let's just repeat that. And it's going to expire in one year. That's fine. So we'll click OK. We'll click on Next. We will turn off application insights because we still do not want to set that up yet. We're not ready for that. We'll go to next, go to the summary, and let's just confirm that remote desktop is enabled. Okay, so let us publish. So once again, it's gonna do its thing. You can keep track of it inside the output and we should see a deployment for it, or a new deployment, soon enough. One thing I do want to go over very quickly is that enabling RDP actually added additional settings inside our service configuration.cloud.cscfg. So that's our service configuration file. So if you take a look on the left, this is what was originally there by default. Not much, pretty empty. Um, on the right is what was added from simply enabling the service, not service configuration, from enabling RDP. We'll cover more about different settings for your cloud configurations in future videos, but I just wanted to give a nice little introduction to it right now and point it out to you. Okay, so the deployment took some time, so I just wanted to 
stop the deployment and show you the log for the deployment with RDP enabled just so that you can compare contrast and make sure everything looks okay. So take, just keep your eye over here on this on the screen. I wish you could make this bigger. I don't know if there's a way to increase the size of that window. So going back to the second method of deployment, which was through the Azure portal and loading your cloud service configuration and service package file, we can do it the same thing that we just did from Visual Studio Publish by once again, right clicking on cloud service, uh, clicking on package, essentially the same settings, except that we want to click on enable remote desktop. So if you click on settings here, just like we did for publish, you could choose a specific certificate but once again, we're just going to choose the automatic. You click on package, and just like before for the earlier videos, once you do that, it's going to do its thing. It's going to open up a pop-up uh, of your folder with those two package files so that you can upload it through portal. And everything else is exactly the same, whether you're updating or deploying for the first time. So here we are back inside the Azure portal. We see that the deployment has finished. We do indeed have our deployment label of RDP deployment with a date time stamp. So let's just check before we actually RDP in to see what changes are set inside remote desktop tab. We see that it is now enabled. It has the default certification uh, certificate and it expires in a year. So we'll go back to overview. And to actually RDP into it, we just want to click on the instance. It will have a new pop-up come up. We want to click on connect. So before we click on connect, I just want to explain one thing that when, once you click on it, you'll get a pop-up about saving or opening a, a remote desktop connection file. And that remote desktop connection is directly to your cloud service, right? That is, in case you're wondering, actually, uh, your local Windows machine probably has remote desktop as well, remote desktop connection. So you could click on this as well, right? But there's no reason to. This is directly made for your cloud service. So let's go ahead and click on connect. We'll do open with. You're going to get this prompt. You can just hit connect for now. And the password was capital R, lowercase dp, 2018, 2018, I believe. Click on OK. You're going to get this message about your certificate. We'll just click Yes. And sure enough, you're logging into your cloud service. It's going to take some time to boot up or log in. And here we have it. We are inside our cloud service. So one thing I wanted to point out right off the bat is that if you look at the time, you might notice that it's very different from your local time, right? Maybe even different from the, the uh, location, server locations that you chose. We chose East US for this, for these examples, but that's not the current EST time. And that's because it's under the UTC time. So in case you don't believe me, right now it currently says 11.15.9.7. So we'll go inside my browser. And if I bring it up here, you'll see that it is in fact 11.15 p.m. UTC, but my local time is 7.15. So let's close that up. And why was this done? Well, the reason for it is actually very simple. Uh, there's a link from Microsoft themselves We'll focus on this. Why are we doing this? Windows Azure is a global service to ensure that applications behave the same way regardless of their physical location. It's important that Windows Azure have a consistent time zone across all geographies. UTC is a natural choice given our global customer base and UTC is not subject to daylight saving time. So the big takeaway from this is that if you have anything that needs to be scheduled, um, even if it's say that you're just located in the uh, East US time zone, you have to, it's, it's probably best for you to make scheduled tasks based on UTC and just convert the time that you need it for EST to US, UTC. Because you never know if your current 
operation, project, whatever, is going to expand it. You might have somebody working halfway across the world and you having your scheduled test um, lined up with your current, you know, East US location, it's just not going to work for them, you know. So that's just a little tidbit that I wanted to share. So there's one more thing I wanted to show you inside this video is how to get inside IIS inside your virtual machine or your cloud service. So you just want to type in IANET MGR, it will show up. Um, it's, uh, it stands for Internet Information Services. And if you actually look at this, this is where our web application is actually being hosted. So you can see the web role. Um, this is the web role name. We just happen to name it web role because it's the default web role one. Uh, you could click on manage website and click on browse and we should see a very same website that we're reaching from the outside. It might take a while for this to actually browse. Okay, whoops, it came up at the bottom. I was expecting it to pop up automatically. Click on add. Yes. Uh, ask me later. Oh my god. So many warnings. Close this. Close this tab. Close current tab. And here we go. We see our application. This is what's being hosted. And sure enough, here it is. So we can go over things like uh, IIS and other things related to um, your cloud service, more configuration details in future videos. But I just want to give a quick introduction um, on how to actually remote inside your cloud service and start playing around with things.